to wake up and smell coffee. And what about you? I would like to welcome to on this stage with my good friend. This is Coffee Plant. And also would like to bring you back to 1985, that when I was born in the village. This is my house. Can you see that full of star? Beautiful light for my home. That's from solar energy. I have a beautiful house. That's probably one of the most beautiful houses I've ever seen in my life. I was born in a lovely Akka family, so which is my mother tongue. And of course, I studied Thai as a Thai person. Unfortunately, I was born in a stateless family at that time. So my family has no Thai citizens. But in the same years, the Thai government sent a team from the district office to do the house registrations and document our family into it. So I don't have birth certificate, but my Thai government is kind enough to give me 1st January 1985 as my birthday. <laughs> However, if today, in 1985, that's my real birthday that my mom gave to me. So thank you very much for celebrating my birthday today. This is my village. It's called Majan Thai. Some of you have seen this village already. Whether it's through televisions or the coffee journey that I organize every year. Can you see that I have one of the most beautiful villages in this world as well? You can see mountains and mountains, beautiful trees surrounded of a village fresh air. I was not any different from these kids that are running around the village. Very often we don't have shoes. We have very little clothes. But we still have very, very good life, happiness. When I was young, my mom told me that I have to go to school, which is I have no idea what the school is. So I asked my, my parents that, how does school like? My parents told me that there's a four corner of the room, there's a teacher standing in front of you with a stick and chalk, teach you how to read, how to write, how to live in this world. I asked them, have you been to school? They say no. This is the activities that always happened in between our family when I was in the village. I learned a lot in the school, but in the same time, I learned a lot from my parents. Every weekend, I travel to the farm with my mom, my parents, and my siblings. And this is the activities that happen during our lunch break. Just sharing our, uh, our experience and our feeling. There's my left, right hand side, there's my mom laughing with lots of happy, happiness. And there's in the middle, there's me. And the left hand side is my younger sister drinking water from the banana leaf. This is the simple life that I, I share with them. When I was young, 
I travel to my school with four kilometers, walking from my home, and four kilometers back to home from kindergarten until finish primary level. Every time that I went to the farm, this is what I saw in my plantations or my, farmer, uh, my parents' plantations. Can you see that this is full of the vegetable, coffee trees, like what you see here, the persimmon, cherries, peach. But when I grow up and I have to go to school and higher and higher educations, we have to spend a lot. And to generate the money and income in the village is not easy. So by growing the vegetations in, in the gardens for our own is not enough. So my parents have to work harder and harder. I was not understanding anything about that at that, at that time. But this day, you can see that how many villagers or parents could actually support their kids to school. I'm very lucky that my parents are very supportive parents. And I was the first person from this village that graduated from university. This is the plantations that we changed from the simple crops that we grow for our own to the fruit and too many cash crop, including the coffee. The villagers back to home, they don't drink coffee. We don't know the taste of the coffee, but we have to grow because we need to generate the income for our siblings, for our family. So I was studying in a secondary and high school in a temple school because my parents have only time for me. But what they say is, if you want to stay in a comfort zone, just stay at home. But if you want to see bigger worlds, just go out to study. And since I don't have money, we don't have financial support, so I decided to join the temple school, which is I stay for free and study for free until finish my high school. And that, I understand that, how could I actually provide the opportunity to others, like many people have been supporting along the way from my home until finishing my high school. So I decided to go to university in English, with the English program, even though I hate this English language. <laughs> Fortunately, the university gave me a very good opportunity to study in the English studies. And I met many friends who speak very good English and professors from many different countries. After finished the university, I joined the Charles Dream Foundation for the nonprofit organization here in Chiang Mai. I was working there three and a half years to help the children in the Livage Camp, my grand's learning center, throughout the semi religious countries. In the last year that I was, was staying in the Child Stream Foundations, I have an idea how to build a social enterprise. I don't know what to do, so go back to the village to talk to the farmers, to talk to my parents. The reason that I, go, I went back to home is not because of I show my smarter or intelligence or anything, but I just can to sit and see the discriminations or the problems that happen between the, the farmers and the, the middleman. So I decided to, 
talk to the farmers to set up the little organizations that I named Akaama Coffee in 2010. And we have been working through the coffee farm, working with many customers, and who have the same idea of helping the communities. This is the coffee fruit that many of you might have, haven't seen before become a brown beans in a grinder. is actually the fruit like we call cherries. The reason that I show this thing is how we work together with different participants, not just the farmers, but people who actually have the same ideas, not just from Thailand, but from different countries, to work together to improve the quality of the coffee that many people believe that Thailand has very bad coffee. I spent some time to travel around, and this is just happened in the uh, beginning of this years. I traveled to Oregon, Portland, to study about coffee roasting, QC, cupping, everything with a Stumptown coffee roaster in Portland. To do this, I bring several samples of coffee back to the village. We roast the coffee in the wok and share the experience to show them what the coffee from different countries is taste like. Not only that, we bring the people who actually have the same idea of helping and study the community from the town back to the village to see the farmers through the coffee journey. So actually, people who are living outside our communities can see and understand the farmers. And at the cafe, what we do is we share the knowledge, we share experience to our customer. And this is one of the moments where we share with the people who come to visit our cafe. And they can be local Thai people or customer from different countries. And you can see that this is the environment or the situation that go every day in the coffee shop that we have. Akama is not only just blending for local people, not just Thai people, but this is for everyone who has the same idea. Our coffee was selected by World Coffee Events in 2010 in London, England, in 2011 in Maastricht in the Netherlands, and 2012 in Vienna, Austria. All this journey that I want to share is to see that actually, if you have passions and motivations to help the villagers or the communities, you cannot do by only yourself, but you can work together with stakeholders, your friends or everyone around you. And can you see that this happiness that happened in the village, they have tried their coffee, and they can try to make their coffee for their own. And this is the happiness that happened. Thank you very much. <laughs>